Hey everyone, sorry, I'm just positioning my screen a little bit. Uh, we are in the middle of online tutoring for a variety of reasons. Maybe you have had to out of necessity because we're all socially distancing, right? Uh, but these are some tools that I'm going to talk about that you can use anytime. So uh, let's say you are just starting out with a student in online tutoring and they may not have some of the tools that you would have with them if you were in person. What I'm going to suggest is creating a little toolkit that you can mail to them. Now, the things that I am going to suggest, I am saying are pretty light, so that if you do have to ship them off, just make sure it's nothing too heavy so that your postage prices aren't gonna go through the roof by sending them toolkits out to a lot of students. Uh, this is just one option, take it as you will, uh, tweak what you want, but I just have a few suggestions if this is something that you're interested in trying out, okay? And so first I have suggested that you get a little Ziploc baggie and let's talk about what's in there. Okay, so the first things that I suggest are some felt squares. Okay, so why would we use felt squares? I use felt squares for a lot of things, but when my students are with me, I put them out for phony manipulation drills, uh, for syllabication, any time that I need to make things multi-sensory, I pull out my felt squares. And if you're online tutoring, you're always thinking of ways to try and keep things multi-sensory, right? Um, and at first, you might be scratching your head thinking, well, how can I do that? So this is one way. Send the student um, some different colored felt squares um, in the toolkit. All right, so let's, what else is in there? <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a little pony bead bracelet. So why would you use that? Well, once again, this is great for phony manipulation. It's also great, it's, it's a great tool if you are having them um, just break down for blending sounds or even as an alternative to uh, finger spelling. They can just slide the bead over as they say the phonemes or the letter names. So this is simple, just on a pipe cleaner with some pony beads on there um, in different colors. So you can make sure you're representing the different phonemes in the word. What else do I have in there? I put a whole bunch of different colored plastic, clear plastic chips in there. Um, once again, if you need a manipulative that is lightweight, that they can easily slide across the table at home. Those are helpful. Um, I also put in a little metal ring so that if you have things for them to print out on cards, they can uh, punch a little hole in there and hang them. I wouldn't say that's a necessity, but something that you might want to consider adding into your little toolkit. Uh, I you may want to consider adding a highlighter for them because you might be highlighting things. So I'm just kind of zip it all up in a little Ziploc bag. Some other suggestions. You could just put things in an envelope. So I have different colored post-its that I've put in there. I've got a little little stacks of blue, yellow, and red post-its that you could put in there. And I've also included some cardstock, really um, quality cards that are multiple colors as well. And I've paper clipped them together. So you can use those as well. Um, I know they're already punched out because I, those, that's how I purchased them. They already have a hole punch on them, but you could use those as well. Um, so you could put things in an envelope to send instead of a little package, but you might want to include the baggie and the envelope together. And a few more things. 
So once again, to keep things multi-sensory, if you don't, if they don't have these tools in front of them, it might be worth considering shipping them to the student. Um, a plastic cross stitch grid so they can trace their uh, photograms on there when you're doing what says or practice finger spelling on there so they can feel that multi-sensory touch on there. So I cut a piece of cross stitch in half so you can get two and ship one out to two students. Um, these are pretty inexpensive on Amazon and get those. And then the last thing you might want to do is to laminate a piece of paper for them to reuse again and again so that you're not constantly having to print things out or they're not having to print things out. So for instance, like a cursive sheet, just laminating that and sending that to them uh, because you might have access to a laminator at home, but they don't. So I put all of these things in a little padded mailer for the student, a little baggie. my little envelope. When I feel this, it honestly feels less than one pound to mail. So it would be very inexpensive to ship out if you wanted to. Uh, you can use one of these padded mailers or just a manila envelope to ship it out that way. Um, but this is one option if you're feeling like, oh, I, how do I keep things multi-sensory to send out to my kids? Um, and if you just say, okay, uh, take out the uh, counters out of your toolkit or take out your pony beads out of your toolkit, then whenever you're in your lesson, they have them ready to go. They know when the lesson is um, starting, have their toolkit nearby. Um, so that's just one option for all of you. Uh, if you enjoyed these tips, I would love it if you could please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you found this useful and I will see you soon. Take care, everyone.